Welcome back to Film Studio Taku Japan. You're going to see some pretty big changes in my studio space. I've been running these old lights, and these very old lights finally just gave up. Um, they were cheap, they were Craigslist find, and I can't say anything good about them. I'll say they lasted technically for a few years, but that being said, they pretty much were always mounted in the same place. Sometimes got moved around a little bit, but the failures were massive. But yeah, so they just they just disintegrated, and it's really amazing because two of them disintegrated in the exact same 24-hour period. One, which is behind me somewhere, I believe, on yeah, way back there, maybe providing a little bit of rim light, is uh, you know that one's been the one that's never moving pretty much for the last year. It's always back there where I can't touch it, <laughs> so I guess. But it's not like I've been rough with them by any means. I mean, they've just been up high. Um, just every now and then I, I move them from one side of the room to the other side. Um, not a complicated thing. They shouldn't have fallen apart like that. But the bottom line is it's something that, you know, I, I for a long time, obviously I could have gotten better light and more efficient light because those were running, each one of them, five uh, fluorescent tubes at about 20 watts. So, and they heat up the room quite a bit. Right now I'm just using, see if I can get into the frame a little bit. It's actually, that doesn't quite show you what it is because I got some art hanging on it to kind of diffuse it from going back. Anyways, it's just this really weird squares <laughs> stand, which actually, I recently saw they actually do sell these square shapes for putting your face around and that's exactly what I've used it for. I've used it for children photography where the kid just puts their face in it and it just lights very well. I can't even, let's see if we can do this. Oh, this cord is scratched and, and oh, totally blown out. <laughs> uh, I think the idea though, it, it lights very well around the eyes and rather than giving the ring light, which is so overdone these days, it actually gives you these squares in your eyes should have a little bit of that right now in my eyes but I'm kind of at an angle so I'm not sure um, but yeah so bottom line is that I did um, go online looking for some used but good lights and originally I was going to just pick up a couple LED plant panels to basically mimic what I had going on with these big soft boxes um, but you know the more I looked at it, I was like, oh, I should get myself a little, uh, whatever you call them, the COB LEDs. Um, nothing big. I don't need it. This is not a large room. It's not tiny, but it's not large. Um, and I'm almost well lit just the way I am, right? Which is actually, as I did this, I was like, oh yeah, I forgot how nice this is. I actually almost didn't need to spend any money. But I found some very interesting lights and I am excited to get them. I don't have them at this moment. Maybe through the Studio Magic we can do it now. Maybe not. So yeah, I'm getting the two lights and then that led to matte boxes, you know. Um, I'll say it is, they are both Bowen's mount lights and you know, I wanted to experiment with a lantern and I also just wanted a straight up, uh, of course the word escapes by, parabolic uh, matte box not only just for the studio because I actually do want to start doing some off-camera flash I do a little bit of flash photography um, with a Nikkor light that I have on my Fuji and it actually works pretty good with a little kind of matte box thing on it but I've been wanting to experiment with off-camera flash but I don't want to go too big because I, I have back issues I don't want to carry heavy stuff but uh, this just kind of opens the gate and I will probably get something like a Godox 8100, 8200 something in the near future. Kind of stretching my budget very thin to put it mildly at the moment. I really didn't have the budget for this. It was just that, okay, these lights went out and it was just right when I was starting to actually focus a little bit on YouTube again. I basically been working this last year in the real world and for me it doesn't work anymore. It's not, I don't crave YouTube just to be clear like I'm happy to help people give people a little bit of inspiration and I, anytime somebody says my work inspires them it really does I just want to tell you guys I'm, I've seen it a few times and it makes me feel very good because that's my aim like I'm not here to be the youtuber in your face doing a little too much something personality I just 
want to share basically my art um, through photos and maybe some other mediums I do sometimes indulge in but uh, and ideally yeah, I, I would like to inspire people to show them that this goes beyond just photography and art is that you don't have to fit into that little box that they put you in in this world um, it's something that I've struggles the wrong word but my whole life I've just known it's wrong um, we're we're in a basically a prison state society across most of this globe and it's obviously increasing and content creation is not exactly helping that in in the in the broad scheme of things the way it is right now it can help a lot more it's it's the guise of helping right now this is not at all where I thought I was going with this but I, I'm going this way right now because it's the right thing to do um, you know a lot of content creators you know that are well known they are making good money and they make it look like oh this is the way to go I'm not saying don't pursue it and you know it's a struggle even with me sometimes whether or not I'm just wasting my time here but I don't think I am but the thing is as it is right now there are so many content creators that no matter how they look no matter how many views and subscribers they have very few of them are actually making a living off of it they might look like they are there are some of course but a lot of them really 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 are not they've learned the tricks to you know make their channels look bigger than they are my channel doesn't look big but I've been doing this for longer than a lot of people and um, whatever so I just I just want to say like it's don't don't fall into the trap of basically giving away work because you think that content creation is going to be your full-time job it could be I'm not saying don't try but don't it should be a pursuit of something more something you want you know what do you want to do let's imagine there is no YouTube what do you want to do is cameras your thing do you want to do photography do you want to paint do you want to dance do you want to sing do you want to travel the world do you want to dive into caves and you know under <laughs> you know the, whatever anyways it's just you know whatever it is whether it's sports whether it's arts whether it's uh, any outlet that lets you express yourself in a creative positive way that ideally you know leaves this world a little bit brighter than before because what we've reached right now is this stagnation point um, and YouTube is kind of the epitome of it right now in my opinion it's just a bunch of infomercials and it's gotta there's gotta be a breaking point here and I think it's very very close now maybe I'm a little bit too old to be on that new wave of what I see coming here but I think we are at that precipice where people you know people burn out on things I mean people are burning out on phones in Japan and I'm sure other places in the world there's actually a phenomenon now where people are starting to back away from phones thank God um, they are the new tobacco they <laughs> here you go it's cool it's hip it makes you look awesome but you know what oh, Oops, it killed you. That's what phones are. They're tobacco for the new ages. But, uh, yeah, that rant, side rant aside, um, yeah, there just has to be this point where we start uh, using this. It doesn't even, it, it might not maintain as YouTube. I, I could definitely see YouTube going the way of, AOL, of AOL really soon as Facebook also is starting to do. But it's just that. Humans crave creativity, freedom, and expression. And if they're not allowed to do that, they will look elsewhere. And when everything is just infomercials thrown at them, eventually they're going to tune out. So I think that the creators, what I'm trying to say is those that are truly creating, not creating content, but just content, those that are creating, they can be creating content. Like, I mean, there can be some... I get it okay income I'm not I'm not saying don't get the money from the companies if they're gonna give it to you but don't do it for that sole reason and don't let them control how you choose to be creative because that is what is going to win the day and who is gonna win the day like who's going to actually last here on YouTube I, 
mark my words here, you're going to see a lot of like the longtime YouTubers that have been making a lot of money. They're going to diminish. Like some of them are just going to skate by on you know what they built already for the rest of their lives. Just like a lot of musicians that maybe have fallen out of popularity, often continue to have enough income to survive, and that's fine. I don't I don't wish them any ill harm. Most of them, <laughs> but but it's it's not going to be maintained for a lot of them. I think a lot of them are going to be looking for another job in the near future. It might be this year, it might be in five years, but it's coming. And so to the new content creators, I'd say embrace you, find you, and don't let the drive to be a content control creator, <laughs> controller maybe is more apt these days, um, don't let it put you in the poorhouse because you're trying to have everything that the other YouTubers have. And that's that's the dilemma I'm facing. That's kind of my point here, I think, is why I've got on this rant, is that, you know, here I have invested heavily is not the right word compared to what other content creators are doing. I was very thrifty in my choices, but that being said, I believe I chose some quality goods. And I'm going to do reviews on them because I chose them because I believe that they're going to serve me well. We'll find out. And I'll be very honest about that. Uh, they won't be paid endorsements, um, at least not at the moment. If a company wants to pay me, I'll be very fully upfront about that. But I refuse to ever be the shill that says exactly what they're going to say. So where am I going to end this? <laughs> so lights are coming. Soft boxes are coming. And really, I am excited about that. I'm not just excited about improving my studio I think it will improve the look here and not just that the ease of use and that's what I really more than anything those lights are a pain in the ass forever what I'm doing now here is the space might not be quite as pretty as it has been over the years I know it looked like not great at all recently but it's going to be much more functional that's the whole point of what I'm doing why everything's moved back behind me basically I don't know if you can tell this space has changed it it might not look different right now to you guys actually but the desk is now in front of those strange cubicle things it used to be over here on the wall and those were there and I used to talk to you from this direction but now it's this way computers behind me I may put something in the backdrop here but I'm actually probably gonna put a green screen over on this wall for some other funny little projects I plan to do but my main aim is to be outside as much as possible doing nature, birds, and beautiful women because I enjoy these things. And uh, there will be some street photography, landscapes, all that good stuff is coming. And just maybe, maybe I have a light that can go with me on these adventures and create some interesting effects. Not at all what I really plan to do with this video. is going to be short and sweet as I always plan, but, you know, I think it's coming. And it's not just me. You'll, if you watch a lot of uh, the more true content creators, this is, this is not just me um, who is feeling this way right now and saying this uh, kind of thing. Maybe I've gone a little deeper into it, as I often tend to dive into the depths. But I think that... That's where I want to go. I want to. I don't want to hold back anymore. I've always felt like I've held back. I've been forced to hold back, and this actually goes back to how I started doing this. I started doing it for personal view, which if you don't know, real quick, I'm not going to do the whole thing, but GH2 hack, the camera that basically started all this. Um, that's where that came from. It's personal view. Um, that group of people, and I did a little bit of work for them. Um, the guy is a nice guy. He's Russian, <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, he, he's very professional, And but he, he, he would often tell me, no, no, like, I, I wanted to be like me, and I tend to be actually, believe it or not, I'm kind of funny when I'm allowed to be, but uh, I I was kind of like myself, and he's like, oh, you can't, you can't do that. He actually gave me an example of Casey from Camera Conspiracies, and like, oh, so he's got all the views, and da da da. <laughs> People don't know you. They, you can't just be quirky. I bet he didn't say it exactly like that, but that was basically the gist of it. And I was kind of like, it's kind of when I actually sorry to you, you know who you are, but 
that's a little bit when I started kind of steadily back and I was like, okay, I gotta figure this out on my own. And it's been years, and I should have, I should have just. It's weird though, because it was just that little thing in the back of my head, and I was just like, you know what? I just gotta be me, however weird I am, because there's, there's always. It's the story of my life. There's people that don't like me. There's people that love me. That's just the reality. I think for anyone. But when you're a little bit more, um, whatever it is that I am, sometimes a little bit more extreme versions of that. Whatever. <laughs> I do what I want, if you can't tell. Um, thrift store, fine. Would you believe that? But it's fully, it's where I'm coming from. Represent. <laughs> Respect. Are you going to follow me, Fuji? Here we go. This is an autofocus tracking test now. No, Fuji can't quite. It's doing pretty good until right there. I think if I slowly, no, you're gonna, you're gonna give me. There we go. Thank you for watching Film Studio Talk with Japan, and I'll see you in the next one with better lighting. Peace.